Welcome back to DIY Guitar Making. So we are on day two of me beginning work on guitar number 106 for David in California. It's a commissioned build. And you can see my bench is a hot mess right now, which means that I got a lot done. So what did I get done? We'll start over here with the rim set here that I have in the mold. So in the last episode, I had simply bent the sides. Now, as you can see, uh, the blocks are attached and the side braces are installed. So first I attach these two blocks. Uh, it's always important to keep in mind what kind of radius you have at the block locations. In this case, for this model, there is no radius at the neck block location. This is dead flat, so that's easy. The block is easy to conform to this shape prior to glue up. This, however, is a slight continuous curve. It happens to be a 49 inch radius, this curve right here. So I actually have a contour board, a special board that I sand this end block on to get it to match up with this exact radius before I glue it up. With rosewood in particular, by the way, and this is rosewood, it's important to remove the oils that may or may not be present at the surface before you glue anything. So actually before I attach the blocks or the braces or anything, and I just had these loosely in the mold, I sanded the whole thing to 220 grit and wiped it down with mineral spirits, which removes those oils present at the surface and then naphtha, which just cleans up the mineral spirits. And then the naphtha just wicks away. It's very evaporative. So that's just good prep work right there. Then I attach the blocks and then I turn my attention to the side braces. And what's nice about this setup is I actually don't have to wait for these, the, for the glue to cure on these uh, before I can start work on those side braces. I can just get right into it. The clamps here, don't get in my way at all. What I want to share with you guys here is a uh, little novel solution that I actually came up with on the spot here that I've been thinking about for a while, but you know, it wasn't a, I'm not solving a big problem. It's kind of a micro problem. But in this case, I figured I'd take a moment to address it and, and fix it. And here's what the problem is. So I attach these side braces with these little clamps I like to use here. And nine times out of 10, that's a great bond. It's totally fine. But sometimes I've noticed one time out of 10, I will get a slight ineradicable gap in the middle there. When I say ineradicable, I mean that there's nothing I can do to get rid of that gap. So when I have those two clamps on the end here, often if you see a gap in the middle, and this is good for you guys to know, if you are putting fairly extreme pressure on these two ends, that's actually why you have a gap in the middle. You can most of the time fix that gap in the middle by simply easing off the clamps a little bit. Your clamps do not need to be super tight for this to be a good bond. So if they are super tight, you're actually forcing a bow into the piece of wood here, the work piece. And that's why I never addressed this problem before because most of the time all I did was I just back off the clamps slightly if I have a gap in the middle and that goes away. Occasionally, I have a gap in the middle and I back off the clamps and that gap still doesn't go away. So I made these little calls here. This is a piece of Wangi, uh, but really I just went through my scrap bin and I was looking for something hard yet somewhat flexible like this is. Okay, and so it could, could probably be rosewood or ebony would probably work just as well. Wangi's what I had. The important part of this is that little strip that I've glued in the center there. Um, that's actually just a little purfling, a maple purfling strip that I had, uh, but really any piece of scrap wood would work fine. What I'm trying to do is make a little seesaw, right? You can see I have this little bump in the middle here. So if I were to take this now, and clamp it on both ends. Hear that click? You can actually hear it seesawing. If I clamp it on both ends, the clamps are easily strong enough to just bend the wood and 
force it down onto both of those ends. And because I have that little bar in the middle, it's actually putting pressure by clamping both sides down, that flex of the wood itself is putting pressure right on that bar, which in turn is putting pressure at the center of the joint there. Okay, so kind of a long winded way of explaining something that when you see it just makes intuitive sense. But I just wanted to share that with you guys. That's not to say that I throw these on every brace now. It's kind of a, a pain to get, you know, handle this call and the clamps at the same time. It's not a big deal, but um, it's the kind of thing where I only throw it on there if I see a problem. So basically if I put a brace down and before I even get the clamps on, I can put my finger in the middle and see that with light pressure, it doesn't close the gap then I know, oh, for this one, I should throw my little specialty call on there. And that, there you go. That's an, just another way, you know, sometimes these improvements get really fine and granular. That's just another way to make a micro improvement, which tightens up your joinery in small, subtle ways, which don't make a difference individually, but do make a difference in aggregate. Okay. Pretty cool. Just wanted to share that. Let's go, um, oh, I didn't finish explaining then what I did. And then after that, in preparation for installing the kerfing, I put the radius, or the taper I mean, on the back side, so this is the back. So this is tapered at an angle towards the neck block, okay? And I gave it a 12 foot radius, which is a nice round radius. It's a good doming for the back. And on the top side, there's a 30 foot radius. Of course, I'm going to radius again a, a second time once the kerfing is on there. All right, let's jump over to the soundboard. Not much to talk about here, but I just wanted to share that the rosette is now installed. Check that out. So I talked about before how um, I was considering putting a cool sapwood stripe at the bottom here but but i had a backup plan to just spin this around and put the sapwood underneath the fretboard if i didn't like the way it looked well as you can see i didn't like the way it looked so i went with this much cleaner look it doesn't have that striking feature but it's simple and it's clean so it's elegant so i, I wanted to go with that there were just some uh i just thought the grain didn't look good over here uh, by the way that gap is intentional so, and that's a good thing to talk about. Whenever I install a solid wood rosette or a radial ro rosette like this, I always separate it at that point uh, that goes underneath the fretboard so that the rosette is then flexible. If I keep the rosette as a solid ring, it's actually harder to get it to fit without gaps in your rosette channel. But if you just break it somewhere, then it can actually move a little bit which allows it to conform to the channel. So that's just a little tip for you guys. Okay, and then I cut out the sound hole and um, I'm gonna keep this. It's always nice for a commissioned build to keep a little piece of wood from it. And um, I'm gonna write a little note on it to the, the buyer and throw that in the case with it. Well, that's where I'm at. Happy to share with you guys and looking forward to the comments and uh, all kinds of great dialogue that we can have, uh, especially for our next Q&A episode. So if you have any questions, either about what we talked about here or just about Luthery in general, throw it in the comments and uh, I will address them. All right, guys, I will see you guys in the next one. Bye for now. If you learned something here, please give this video a like and subscribe so you can be notified when I release a new DIY guitar making video. And if you want to really learn more, take one of my structured online courses at ericschaferguitars.com or register for a hands-on guitar building workshop here with me in Burnville, Pennsylvania.